The United States Congress is, is the, the legislative branch. So it's one of three branches of the U.S. government. And within it, there's two co-equal houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. And so they operate independently of each other. They have different rules about how they operate. They have a different number of people. Uh, and, and they serve different functions. So in, in this, there are two senators for every state in the United States. And then in the House of Representatives, the number of representatives per state depends on the population of that state. And they represent a particular district, and that district contains a certain number of people. Uh, the number of people changes from year to year because it depends on uh, the, the census. It depends on how many people live in the state. But essentially, the House of Representatives, each individual represents a district within a state. And it depends how many people are in the state, how many representatives that state will have. So for example, California has a lot of people. It's the eighth largest economy in the world. It has a lot of representatives in the House of Representatives. Wyoming is a very small state. It, ha it has many fewer than one million people even. It's a tiny, tiny state. It's smaller than most cities. Uh, in the Senate, Wyoming has the same number of senators, too, as California. Wyoming has two, California has two. In the House, it's by population. So it's a very different makeup of individuals in the House of Representatives than it is in the Senate. And one house, the House of Representatives, has passed a climate and energy bill. The other house, the Senate, uh, is, is working on the bill and making progress. Once the Senate passes the bill, it will then go into conference, it's called. So that's where you take the Waxman-Markey bill and the Kerry-Boxer bill, and you bring them together, and you see where there are similarities and where there are differences, and you have a conversation between the two houses about how to, how to harmonize those two processes and come up with a single bill. It's down to individuals now. We, we need 60 votes, and so we need to have uh, people who have the vision and courage to do the right thing for the planet and the future within the U.S. Senate. And really, in the end, what we're talking about in the context of climate change is overturning the grip that the fossil fuel industry has on our economy and on our politicians and on our politics. And that's essentially what climate change is about. That, that's why it has been so difficult to get action on this problem. It's because it's fundamentally about taking the power away from the fossil fuel industry. And so if you have a different balance between the House of Representatives and the Senate in terms of, of, of where you have more uh, fossil fuel space, then you can see that you would have a, a political difference in the difficulty of, of getting action on climate change. Now that said, a lot of the coal states now take climate change very seriously. And we're starting to see this around the world as well, where there are whole countries that have serious fossil fuel industries and export fossil fuels. and just Despite that, they're realizing that the costs of the impacts of climate change are just so enormous that they need to act to deal with climate change anyway. So countries like Norway and Mexico, obviously these are countries that export fossil fuels, but they get it. And we're starting to see that in the U.S. It's not as fast as we would like. We're doing a lot of public education ourselves. We hope the administration will do more of that public education because the U.S. public really needs to understand the true costs of not acting. And, and we haven't been able to get that information out as broadly as we would have liked at this point in time.